Alright, welcome everybody to part 3 of my Street Fighter 5 modding tutorial series. In this tutorial I will show you the remainder of my modding pipeline. Getting a custom mesh into Street Fighter 5. So, <clears throat> we're going to continue here where we left off on part 2. I am going to now link the remaining... Hair material. If I could just get this off of here. Sorry about that. To the mesh. To skin, rather. Okay, so first we're going to go to hair. Edit mode. That's the remaining hair, which I want to link to skin. So all I do is select skin. Assign. Select, deselect, hair, select, just to make sure there's no hair, so you can see there is no hair. Okay, you'll see why this looks like this when we get the character in game. I designed this specifically to look jagged like this. It's actually very soft and foldable in the game. Unlike the spikes, I used Blender's weight paint. You see here. This makes it animated to the same as his back. During the animation, when he's pumping up his chest, all of this will fold in and flap like loose skin which is how I want it to look in game anyways that's outside of what we're actually here to view today so now that I've linked the hair to the skin we're gonna go ahead and export this out and import it into Dido first let's just save this I always like to save a copy of my files that I'm working with and then let's export again we're gonna turn this on Using the shift key, we're going to left click armature so that we have the mesh. Primary armature, this, this piece is here, viewable, and the sub armature that shows here, which is all the bones. <coughs> and we're going to file export out. Again, I already have. my settings set up here with armature mesh everything set up right in case you missed my previous tutorial during exportation you should make sure that you have selected objects selected armature mesh only in the armature tab deselect add leaf bones and change armature to root and then you can go ahead and export out your fbx normally when you're exporting for the a costume or char character for the first time out of Blender. Again, I use Blender 2.77 RC2 or release candidate 2. You want to set your scale settings so you would set the scaling. Let's go back just so I can show you how that is in Blender. So when you have your mesh viewed here, you just press the S key and that gives you a scale down. Well, as you can see, I'm scaling now an actual bone. But if you look at the bottom left corner of the screen, you'll see the numbers moving where the scale is, which shows up here when I press the scale key in the viewport. You can see it's moving. Okay, so again, having the mesh highlight, the mesh and armature highlighted. Press the S key to scale, and you can just type in the number, which in our case is 0 0.393-7008. Hit enter, and it scales it down. I think I missed something there. Uh, did I highlight it? I think... 
Sorry, I didn't highlight it. Skill. There. So it scales down the armature and the um and the mesh. Again, select armature. Shift left click on the mesh. Hit the S key and change your size. We don't need to do this because once you import that's funny once you import your mesh into Unreal Engine 4 if you did your scaling during the import process it'll maintain that scaling on that mesh in your project. So the only thing we need to do here is just export them out as we normally would. <sighs> My mouse is acting up. I'm getting tired of that. Okay, export. I'm just going to make sure that the bones are intact right, by right clicking on this and clicking re-import. Okay, so that lets me know that the bones are intact and all of my changes are there. Make sure, go to... And I'm going to highlight skin. Yes, okay. So as you can see here, what used to be his mohawk is now skin since the changes we just made. Okay, so now I'm going to open up Dedu. Dedu is actually part of Quixel Suite. I have Quixel Suite 2.0, which is a nice suite of tools that you can use to edit textures and materials and maps through Photoshop. So it's actually quite robust and handy. DDO, where DDO, can be used to create custom materials which you can then import into your Unreal Engine game project. We're not going to get into that today. Um, I'm not sure that creating custom materials is feasible with Street Fighter V. So for now, we'll just concentrate on the best options to use for our mods. So I will be using DDO. The NDO is great for creating customized normals and changing an albedo or diffuse texture into a normal map. We're going to be using DDO to paint directly onto our mesh. So once you open up DDO, you click on mesh and you can load the FBX that we just exported out. Now I'm here, I attach my normal map. This will be the default Zangief normal map. So we're going to come here. Remove this check mark for flip Y channel. On export target, you want UE4 RMA packed. Um, technically, there's not really a difference between this and UE4, the regular one. Um, I have it on packed because RMA packed is what you would actually use if you're creating material files for Unreal Engine. So you might as well just get used to using that. These are maps that you could bake in 3DO. 3DO is where we'll be able to view our mesh in real time, showing the edits that we've done to all of the maps that we're using for our project today. Um, Street Fighter V doesn't use position gradient, curvature, or object space normal maps. It may use curvature in material files, but that's not what we're editing. The actual characters or costumes do not use any of these three maps, so there's no need to bake these. Albedo map is your diffuse or color map in Street Fighter V. So we will open that up. Okay, now, um, Street Fighter V also does not use any of these other 
maps per se. If you look down here, through this DDo project that we're starting now, we will be creating an albedo map, a metalness, a roughness, and a normal map. The metalness and roughness can be used in Street Fighter V, and I'll show how in just a minute, once we create our first edits to my skin today. So, the character that I'm creating is Abomination. Um, it's kind of based off of the actual character Abomination from the Hulk series, um, but with a bit of a horror twist, more akin to something that you would see in a Silent Hill or Resident Evil game. Um, if you're not familiar with the mods that I normally create, I generally create WTF mods. None of my mods are canon. Um, very rarely do I create a canon mod or a regular character type mod. My mods are usually intended to show off or showcase different aspects of modding and specific types of modding and the extremes of modding capabilities within any given game. <laughs> so, right here we have our tabs, albedo, let's just open this up so we have a nice big view of everything. Okay, so we can go on albedo, metalness, normal, and roughness. Metalness and roughness we'll get to in a minute. Let's start with preparing our albedo map. So, first thing I'm going to do is duplicate this layer. And then I'm going, what I want to do is, as you saw in Blender, parts of his chest and hair, now that I've changed it to skin, are pulling from the black parts of this texture file here. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to change both the color on the albedo and the actual texture in the normal map. This is what the normal map looks like now. As you can see, what was black is completely flat here because it's unused. And all of these muscles and th that Zanjif has, I'm going to change as long, along with his face and hands. I'm going to change, well, actually add texture to that and then change the blank spots here. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to copy all the black bits. We can cut these down for a minute. Because I'm going to add to this. So now we have that base. I am then going to copy the clothing onto a different layer so I can keep it separate from the black parts and the skin, which is what I'm actually going to be texturing to today. Uh, all these little white pieces here is, I believe is teeth, if I'm not mistaken. So we're just going to copy this. Sorry about that. Microphone's getting in the way. done here. These are his eyes. As you can probably tell. I think his tongue is in there too. I 
just a part of this. Sorry about that. Trying to do this as quick as possible. So we can get to the good parts. his underwear. Oh, continuous. Alright, that should do it. Oh, I didn't cut that out, huh? <laughs> Alright, that's no problem. I'm just gonna merge that. Perfect. So this we're just gonna keep for later. Our main thing we're working on is this and this. So let's again cut this out of here. So, what we're going to do is duplicate this as well for later. I'll explain why. So we're going to need this for our separate metalness. This will be metalness and roughness together. I'll show what I mean towards the end of the tutorial. And we're going to merge these now. and clear out all of these redundant tabs that are here by just going from one to another okay so with the layer that we want to start our editing on i'm now going to add a smart material to this first let me That. I'm going to add a smart material. I'm going to go here to Legacy, Organic, Creature. And I'm going to use Inflamed Monster Skin. Oh, that's new. That looks kind of nice. What is this? Raptor? Well, anyways, we're going to use Inflamed Monster Skin. <laughs> That's an actual material. When you're creating custom materials in DDoO, you can combine several different materials together and export them directly into your Unreal Engine project. And that's for another video. What we're concentrating on now is just creating the textures and normal map that we want for our creature. Okay, so now I am going to cut out these bits. That is why I created this cutout here, because this is what we are not going to alter. Now we'll be working on just the parts that we actually want to 
mod on the character's costume. I'm going to do the same thing on the normal map. Here, select Inferred Inflamed Monster, just press Delete, and it'll delete that from the entire project. It'll prevent it from being edited. We can delete this layer here, we don't need this. Anymore. And I'll do the same thing to the metalness and roughness later. <coughs> Alright, so let's get back to it. Highlighting inflamed monster skin. I'm going to click on this to go into the group. And here we see all of the different layers of materials and textures that are being applied. So I want to change the skin texture. Holding down the control key will allow me to adjust all of the attached maps simultaneously. So I want opacity to be 100, texture intensity to be 100, and I want the scale to be 1. Okay, that's the roughness map. I don't know why it defaults to that one. Okay. Now I'm going to click on flesh texture. We're going to bump that intensity up to 100. Uh, see, that's nice and meaty. And scale it down to zero. Is that right? Or no, or I think scale it up to two. That's what I wanted. Yeah, that's what I want, so I can have that meat there. Alright, now if I go into normal map, you'll see what it looks like now. You see, it's now added a bunch of skin textures to the map itself. Now, we can refresh this to 3DO and view this in real time. This is what I'm doing right now. And this is what it looks like. Uh, you can see here he looks kind of wet, which is actually what I want. That is due to this map, metalness. The metalness is adding that shiny layer to it. The roughness is adding the bits to make it look more like skin and less like actual metal. So it looks more like wet skin. <coughs> we can increase this intensity we want slightly and I want it to be extremely shiny same with the skin I want the skin to be extremely shiny uh, intensity of the metalness up a bit, although technically it, you're not going to see that here. Um, roughness is going to be this nice funky looking color, which is perfect. We can leave that alone. I'll explain how to utilize this roughness map in Street Fighter V. The metalness is self-explanatory. It's white, and we're going to use it as white in the specific map later. As you see here, it's nice and shiny. 
and although it won't look exactly like this in game because of course it's not going to be metallic it'll look pretty close it will look shiny which is exactly how I want it to look like wet skin Okay, so we can close this. Okay, if I'm being honest, what I was showing with the metalness, technically Street Fighter Five doesn't use metalness per se, because this would actually be a specific material that you could place in a game and. All of the values we've assigned here will take place in the game when read through the material of metalness and the character would look exactly like it did in our 3DO viewing that I just showed. Um, we don't really need this map. I'm going to use the white parts for specific function, but it's not necessary. The roughness comes in handy because it's already stamped out which is nice to have for another part of a map that we're going to do so I will be applying okay so we should Sorry about that. I'm going to reverse this and cut that out. Okay. Then we're going to merge this. And I'll show you what we're going to do with this map in a minute. Our normal map we're simply going to merge this is done exactly how I wanted it <sighs> although hmm, I kind of want the face a little bit more grotesque I think we're gonna run that one one more time I'll do that in a minute though it's not necessary for this video and then we can go ahead and just combine this. And this will be the map we are done with. Just merge this. Might as well just save the project. Okay, I am now ready to copy this to my PGA files and import them into Unreal Engine. <coughs> so, the color map, I would change to 2048. That's the size that the game uses. Um, I can roughness map, I think is 4096 we'll find out in a second this we leave here i'm going to open up these maps okay so first let's get the normal out of the way so i bake my maps in unreal editor there's no need to do any hex swapping Just save it as Targa, same way as I imported it. I can close my normal map. Now, this roughness map, I can bring into my SRMA map. 
which I am actually going to add into a DDS that I was playing with earlier. This is how this works, which is a great find by PFunk. Each layer is for a specific function. Red is basically specular. Green is roughness. Blue is metalness. On a scale of 0 to 100, or a scale of white to black, showing the intensity of each type of function. So white being the most intense, black, or 100% black being zero value, or least intense of that particular function. <laughs> so for the roughness, let's go back. Wait, is this, let me just double check the image size here. I think it is 2048, yeah. So we're gonna pop this down to 2048. And then we're gonna copy this roughness map directly into the green channel. And that's gonna give me the roughness that I want for my skin. This is the specular amount I want for my skin. As you can see here, I've already adjusted the specular on his beard. I left the metalness to nothing on the face, but increased it on the rest of the body. This will give it a nice wet look. The alpha of the SRMA texture is actually the uh, ambient occlusion map, which you can also bake in 3DO. <coughs> um, but for my purposes, because I want specific parts to be extremely shiny, I just did it all manually. I wish this would stop. No, I don't want to save. So I've already changed how I want this to be nice and shiny. Let's go ahead and save this file. This will be the only map that we have to manually edit in hex. Okay. At least for the purposes of my particular mod. Oh, well, we might as well put this to cook. So now that I've finished my textures in DDo, I can come back to Unreal Engine, go to the texture folder where I have previously imported my textures. If I wanted to re-import, I would right-click, re-import, and it will re-import what I just edited. However, these are ones I edited earlier where I double-edited the normal map. As you can see here, it's a lot brighter because I, the same steps I just took to create the first normal map, I did the exact same thing to add a secondary layer to this normal map to enhance all of the features that I wanted for my monster skin. Here you can see my color map is pretty much the same. So we're just going to save that. We're going to save this one. Make sure that the mesh is saved. And then we're going to put this to cook. And while that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and alter this in hex. And then we're going to see what the character looks like in the game. Sorry about that. Let's open the 
Sop. Okay, we start here at offset 80. I mean, if you guys don't already know, all of the DDS files that you save for Street Fighter 5, starting at offset 80, you copy to the end of the file. This is if you're going to manually inject your finished texture into the texture you asset file. In the texture you asset file, you start from after the none entry, which normally is 0B, 8 bytes to 0 null. And we're going <coughs> to start here, paste right. The last four bytes will be the footer of an Unreal package file. Footer and header are the same, they just signify that this is an Unreal engine file. You see the header and the footer are the same. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And our assets are already done cooking, so we can go ahead and bring these into the game. what it looks like. Training. Hillside Plaza. Zongyev. Zongyev. Cyclone! Muscle is always waiting to be trained! It came out nice and grotesque, just like I wanted. And that'll conclude our tutorial for today. Um, be, don't forget to leave a like or comment down below. Subscribe if you want to see more videos. And let me know if there's anything specific that you guys would like me to discuss or go over with as far as 
modding Street Fighter V or Unreal Engine games in general. If you have any suggestions or you would like, you have any specific requests, leave them down in the comment section below. You can also hit me up on my Twitter feed or PM me on the Street Fighter V modding forums, which is zetaboards.com this is where we upload and discuss all of our Street Fighter 5 pods alright everybody take care and thanks for watching